Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News on iTunes. One word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, kudos to the IBF. They've had enough. They have ordered Carl Froch to begin negotiating with his mandatory challenger, James DeGale. Right? And they further sent Froch a letter that says that if they can't reach a deal within the next 30 days, and understand, both Froch and DeGale have the same promoter. There shouldn't be any promotional issues. Right? If Froch can't reach a deal with the Gale within the next 30 days, there's going to be a purse bid. Understand, James the Gale can force the issue by simply refusing to step aside. Now, if I'm the Gale, I would do just that. Let me also point out, too, that the guy right behind the Gale in the IBF's rankings is Andre Durrell. Right? Both of these guys, as you could imagine, want to crack at Froch. The Gale, because Froch is ranked ahead of him in the United Kingdom. Right? The Gale wants the title. The Gale wants to be the best in the UK. Andre Durrell obviously wants Carl Froch because Froch is the only man to beat him. And Andre Durrell privately doesn't believe he did. Right? Durrell is a warrior. He wants redemption. Right? So you have one guy who wants Froch's title. You have another guy who wants redemption and Froch's title. Right? Now Froch is doing everything possible, as you can imagine, to avoid fighting the Gale. Froch has even suggested that the Gale should fight George Groves. Why would the Gale do that? What title would the Gale get from fighting George Groves today? If the Gale's already the mandatory contender, what added advantage would the Gale get? from fighting George Groves. Think about it. Now, Frotch is trying to fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Let me point out that that's a dangerous fight. If I'm DeGale, I don't allow him to do so. Right? Chavez Jr. is enigmatic. He seems to have problems making weight, right? Whether it's 160 or 168. Because he's actually a bigger man for both weight classes, right? Chavez Jr. seems to have a problem training, right? Some people close to Chavez Jr. have accused him of not training diligently for fights. One of them is Freddie Roach, right? Who claims that Chavez Jr couldn't even get motivated to train more than a few times for his fight against Sergio Martinez. Right? But, and it's the big but, Chavez Jr. knows how to fight inside. Chavez Jr. hits hard. Right? Some men haven't been able to withstand Chavez Jr.'s power, including current middleweight champion Andy Lee. Right? If Chavez Jr. has been training while all of this is going on, and if Chavez Jr. shows up prepared to fight, then someone tell me why his style isn't the kind of style that would give Carl Froch all he can handle. Because understand, Chavez Jr. is not an ambush fighter. 
nor is he trying to be a cute boxer. Right? Chavez Jr. is a guy who tries to get in on you and wear out your ribcage. He fights like his father. Right? And so the problem for Carl Froch is Froch is a guy who relies on an opponent's respect for his punching power. Right? Opponents are afraid to jump in on Carl Froch because they know Carl Froch has heavy artillery. Right? Froch is a guy who likes to have a little bit of distance between himself and his opponent. Doesn't he? He likes to keep an opponent outside with the kind of jab that repeatedly hit Mikel Kessler up top in their rematch. Right? Frotch likes to have the imminent threat of danger enveloping him. He doesn't want a guy who's going to come up and try to lean a shoulder on him and then go to his ribcage. He doesn't want to deal with, let's say, the Tony Bellew, who leaned on Nathan Cleverly in their recent cruiserweight fight. He doesn't want that. He doesn't want to deal with that kind of guy. Well, that's exactly who Chavez Jr. is. Right? I'll agree if Chavez Jr., who hasn't been in the ring recently, there's going to be a lot of ring rust. Understand, it's January right now. If he and Frotch were to sign for a fight, that fight wouldn't take place for several months because in boxing, you need to secure the venue, you want to secure the media outlets, right? The media outlets want to be able to advertise the fight. Right? They don't want to suddenly tell you that Frotch is fighting Chavez Jr. next week. Right, The fighters themselves are going to want to pose for these cheesecake-type shots where they're looking at each other, looking mean. Right, They're going to want to play to their fan bases. They're going to want to give interviews and stuff like that. All of that takes time. You sign a fight today, you're not fighting most times for 90 days, 120 days. Then, of course... You want to make sure that your fight is the main fight for that weekend, right? You don't want to sign up and have a situation where, guess what? There's another big fight happening then. No, you want all the attention on you. Let me let you in on another secret involving Las Vegas. Carl Frotch wants to fight in Las Vegas. Understand, these Las Vegas casinos have full dance cards, Right? They've booked performers, right? Musicians, bands, conventions, right? They have people who have rented arenas. You can't just show up willy nilly and say, hey, MGM Grand, I'd like to book your arena for a month from now. The MGM band might say to you, hey, look, we have a country and western award show being broadcast from our arena then. Or, look, Beyonce is going to be in our arena. She has the arena that night. Keep in mind, the MGM Grand has relationships with other entertainers. They're not going to tell some big entertainer, hey, look, um, we're going to have to cancel your lucrative multi-million dollar show because Carl Froch's promoter has called us, and he's going to fight Chavez Jr. Even if the MGM Grand thought that the Froch Chavez event is the more lucrative event, there are things called contracts. There are things called lawsuits. Right? If the MGM or Caesars or you name the venue, right, the convention center, if they're booked, they're booked. It's like a hotel. Right? You can't show up to the luxury hotel and say, look, I demand a room. They might tell you, hey, I'm sorry, sir. We're the Ritz-Carlton. We're fully booked. You'll be out of luck. So understand, 
Carl Frotch has some tough decisions to make. Right? He could abdicate his title. But if he abdicates the title, doesn't that diminish whatever he's trying to accomplish against Chavez Jr.? Right? He can make a shrewd decision. Lord knows he wouldn't be the first. If he's talking to the Chavez Jr. people, and the Chavez Jr. people can't even figure out who they are, Right? If Chavez Jr. is saying, look, man, I don't have a promoter. That contract's expired. And if Top Rank, who has promoted his fights in the past, says, you've got to be kidding. We have a contract. If there's a promotional dispute going on, Carl Froch might not even be able to close a deal with Chavez Jr. in the next 30 days. That's a distinct possibility. Carl Frotch himself might look at his lovely family, might look at his reputation. He's a big name. Understand, at a certain point, fans don't care about titles. At a certain point, your name is so big that fans will show up whether you have a title or not. Right? I'm guessing. That if every sanctioning body stripped Vladimir Klitschko and then Klitschko were to announce that he's fighting someone, a lot of people would want to watch that fight. I remember a time back in the day where heavyweight champion Riddick Bowe was having a feud with a sanctioning body. See, he held a press conference where he said, look, I'm the heavyweight champ. And I'm stripping this sanctioning body of my recognition. He threw the belt in the garbage. Carl Frotch might say, you know what? I don't want to deal with the Gale and Durrell. That's too full a dance card for me. Don't I win if I say I'm retired or I'm giving up this belt? Right, I'm going to give up this belt and then have DeGale and Durrell fight each other and eliminate one of them as foes. Understand, Carl Frotch would like nothing better than one of these guys to simply go away. Right? He might feel he's in the victory lap part of his career. Hey, I've done the work. I've been a warrior. I fought the tough fights. How many times do I have to fight Mikel Kessler? Didn't I fight Andre Ward? Why right? didn't I fight a host of other guys who were viewed as dangerous at the time? Lucien Boutte, Glenn Johnson, Jermaine Taylor. Haven't I taken the Grand Tour? Wasn't Arthur Abraham viewed as a big threat when I fought him? Can I walk in a room and have boxing fans look at me and say, wow, you know, I can't say Carl was the kind of guy who ducked people. I can't say Carl has an inflated record. Didn't he give George Groves a rematch? Didn't Groves get two bites at the apple? Wasn't Groves left semi-conscious on the canvas? So Carl Frotch might do a Ray Leonard move. He might say, you know what, guys, I'm, I'm retired. Right? Let these young lions fight each other. And the one who's standing, who I think I can beat, then I'll come back. Then I'll get that extra payday. In the meantime, I'm going to hang with my wife and my children. Or my girlfriend and my children. I don't know what Carl's personal situation is. You know what I'm saying. But the point is simply this. Keep a close eye on what decisions Carl Frotch makes. I can tell you that back in the day, guys like Ali retired as champion and then came back to try to fight specific fighters. Ali made the mistake of coming back and trying to fight his former sparring partner, who was then the heavyweight champion, Larry Holmes. Right, understand Ray Leonard was notorious for, you know, 
quitting, walking away from the sport. Ray Leonard had a detached retina at one point. Ray even held a press conference at one point where Marvin Hagler showed up to the press conference, right? And Ray then <laughs> announced at the press conference that he was still retired and he wouldn't be fighting Marvin Hagler, right? Carl Frotch right now sees a lucrative opportunity against Chavez Jr., right? If you're going to fight Chavez Jr., the best time to do so is when Chavez Jr. is rusty, hasn't been fighting, might not be on his game, right? And let's face it, too, his recent opponents haven't been spectacular opponents, right? Brian Vera is an intriguing opponent. I thought Vera clearly won the first fight. But before Vera fought Chavez Jr., it wasn't like we were trembling in our boots. Vera wasn't viewed then like, let's say, an Andre Ward or James DeGale is today. Right? So, Carl Frotch, who wants to fight in Vegas, people need to take that seriously because Frotch is, at this point, playing with the house money. He's had a great career. So now he's saying, look, you know, I came in this sport to accomplish a few things. I have a bucket list. On my bucket list is fighting in Las Vegas. You know what? Carl Frotch decides where he wants to fight. Right? Because Carl could easily say, look, I have at least seven figures in the bank. I could walk away from the sport. Let's be blunt, too. Let's say Carl Frotch wasted his money. Let's say he was out there, you know, spending his money on woman, wine, and song. And we'll pretend that that's wasting your money, right? You know what? You and I know that these guys, once they hit a certain level of recognition, don't have to stand in line. They're getting comped, right? Restaurants are saying, hey, come on in. Carl, which table do you want? Hey, your meal, the drinks, it's on us. Let me tell you how the entertainment business really works. I used to uh, represent a local club here in town. And you know the rest. Uh, some hip-hop stars basically told the club, Hey, we'll show up and we'll be seen in your club. But we want $10,000 to show up for four hours. Right? People would pay Carl Frotch to show up places. So even if Frotch spent all his money, Frotch would get residual benefits from having been a superstar fighter. So let's see what Carl Frotch does. Right? He might retire. That's a possibility. He might pull a Ray Leonard, say he's retired while biding his time watching young lions fight each other right he might have vivid memories of the later rounds against andre durrell and he might think to himself man those rounds were a lot harder than let's say the rounds against mikhail kessler right and so let's see what's going on but I've been saying online now for a long time that Carl Frotch, in my opinion, understands that I don't, you know, he can't beat James DeGale. Right? Personally, I question whether he can beat Andre Durrell at this point. Right? Because I'm telling you, Andre Durrell looks good. Right? When you're the king, and there are young lions at the gate. And you don't need the money. Right? And you understand that you can come back at any time. And fans will line up to watch you. You have some cards to play. Most people don't. I don't expect Carl Frotch to sign to fight James DeGale. I think Frotch understands that he likely loses his belt and he loses his status as the best in the weight class in his country. I think Carl would rather fight Chavez Jr. than fight James DeGale. I don't think Carl Frotch fights Andre Durrell. 
Why? Because he knows better than anybody else how tough Andre Durrell is. He might have sat down with his team watching that fight that took place in his backyard in Nottingham, and he might realize, wow, I was <laughs> at home, and this fight was too close to call. Right? Understand a judge had Durrell winning that fight. Think about it. Understand Durrell today is better than Durrell was then. Right? Think about it. So don't be surprised if Carl Froch doesn't pull a Sugar Ray Leonard. I wouldn't be surprised if Carl Froch holds a press conference, shows up at the press conference, and then looks at James DeGale and Andre Durrell, who would almost certainly be there, and say, guys, I'm taking time off from the sport. <laughs> right? Why would he? By the way, for those who remember, Ray Leonard then came back. He fought Hagler. Of course, he fought Hagler when Hagler was a little bit older, right? You know, he the, the story is that Ray Leonard was ringside watching Marvin Hagler fight someone, and Ray thought to himself, I can beat this guy. Ray actually turned to his uh, broadcast partner at the time and said, I could beat this guy. So then Ray Leonard ended up coming back. Don't be surprised if the Carl Frotch story isn't similar. Right? If he abdicates his belt, or if he gives up the IBF belt, right? You know, if he announces a retirement, he knows, just like Lennox Lewis even today knows, that if he announced the comeback, some promoter someplace would be willing to pay him millions of dollars. Just know that the IBF is on to Carl Froch's reluctance to fight his mandatory contender. I don't think Carl Froch wants to fight either his mandatory or the guy behind him. I'll even go further. I don't think Carl Froch wants to fight Anthony Durrell, Andre's brother, who has a share of the title at 168 pounds. Right? Keep an eye on this story. It's riveting. Right? The old lion doesn't want to fight his mandatory, even though his mandatory is an Olympic gold medalist from his own country. Food for thought. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.